Live long and prosper. So in this video series, I'm going to be talking through the social justice elements of every episode of the original series of Star Trek. Um, the thing that inspired this project was actually a Fox News article which argued that Star Trek has in some way betrayed its traditional commitment to a sort of political neutrality or middle ground by embracing progressive politics. In this series, we're going to see that Star Trek has always embraced progressive politics and it's always been aspirational for social justice in various senses. Um, I am taking a broad perspective on social justice here, um, so that may, that may include multiple different types of uh, social justice, whether that's racial, whether that's economic, whether that's religious, whether that's abilities, gender and sexuality, um, anything, anything broadly considered. Um, I will go through every episode. Some of the episodes I will I will interview fellow Trekkies and talk with them about it. Um, and then below, uh, in the descriptions, I will give you additional information about the episodes, particularly uh, their original air date, who wrote the the uh, the screenplay, and who uh, directed that episode. I also want to dedicate this series to my dad, Michael Allen Zapkin. Uh, he was an OG Trekkie from back in the day, and uh, it was watching the original series with him that I came to love Star Trek. So in this video, we're going to talk about Turnabout Intruder, the final episode of the original series. We made it all the way through! Yay! So, um, in this episode... The Enterprise goes to the planet Hamas 2 to rescue a scientific party um, which ostensibly has been exposed to radiation. Most of the, the team is dead. The two people who are alive are the Doctor, Arthur Coleman, and lead scientist Dr. Janice Lester. She is apparently on the brink of death. Now, what's important to know about Janice Lester is that she and Kirk had a relationship back in the day, some sort of unspecified time, and it ended badly. Why exactly it ended badly is open to interpretation. She has her version of things, basically that he walked out on her, um, abandoning her, her to pursue his own ambitions, his version of things is closer to um, her jealousy and hatred of herself for being a woman uh, made her impossible to live with. <clears throat> Nonetheless, things went badly. So, uh, Janice appears to be quite weak. They, they uh, Kirk, Spock, and McCoy beam down to the planet. Janice is in a bed. Uh, Coleman's like... Yep, she's probably dying. Then uh, Spock, McCoy, and Coleman go off to check on some faint life readings as the other members of the expedition are dying. And, surprise, surprise, Janice has a evil plot. Basically, on Chemist 2, she's discovered a device that can transfer the consciousness? Something like that. Um, it's not 100% clear exactly. The life essence or something is a, is a phrase that they use. But basically it transfers the personality, the psyche, the knowledge, the mind, etc., etc., from one body to another. And so she uses this device on Kirk to switch their personas. So the mind, body, or the mind, spirit, identity, psyche, etc. of uh, of Janice Lester is put into the body of Kirk, and the mind, spirit, psyche, whatever it is of Kirk is put into the body of Janice Lester. 
she then, she in Kirk's body, then tries to kill Kirk in her body. Um, and she says that it's better to die than to live with the indignity of being a woman. So clearly, clearly she is in a good place. Um, so she is not able to kill Kirk. Um, they get interrupted when the other, when the other party comes back and Kirk had, okay, I'm going to say Janice, just think Janice in Kirk's body. And when I say Kirk, I mean, Kirk in Janice's body, that's going to streamline things. So Janice has them all beamed back up to the ship, basically taking over the role of Captain Kirk. Things are initially okay, except that McCoy, using the ship's instruments, determines that there's actually nothing wrong with Janice's body. There is no radiation poisoning. There's, no, there's nothing that should be impacting the body physiologically. Holman, on the other hand, because he's in on this whole scheme, uh, this whole scheme um, he asserts that she is in dangerous condition and has to be sedated. Janice, knowing that if Kirk wakes up in Janice's body, he'll be like, this is some crazy fucking nonsense going on here. Uh, Janice agrees to put Coleman in charge on the basis that Coleman had been the physician for the scientific research team for three years. McCoy points out that he has a terrible track record um, because Starfleet had, or the Surgeon General's office, had removed him from his post for administrative incompetence and continuous medical blunders. And the fact that everybody on this scientific team other than himself and Janice died suggests maybe he's not a bang-up doc. But... Um, Janice, nonetheless, requires that Kirk not be allowed to wake up or interact with anybody. So, uh, Janice tries to dump Kirk at a, uh, a colony that has inferior medical facilities, and Spock is basically like, that doesn't make any sense. That's a terrible plan. You shouldn't be doing that. And the first sort of cracks in the facade start to show. Janice becomes increasingly irrational when challenged. Um, this basically sort of ramps up as McCoy and Spock are like, the captain is acting erratically. This is not how the captain normally acts. And so they are trying to work out what's been going on. Um, They end up convinced that something has happened to Kirk. McCoy's medical tests can't find anything, but when Kirk mind or when Spock mind melts with Kirk in Janice's body, he's like, "Yeah, that's the captain's mind." The problem is that's not acceptable objective evidence that a court under Starfleet could consider. And so when Spock tries to get Kirk out of, of solitary confinement where Janice has placed him, Spock, it, Janice decides to try Spock for mutiny. During the trial, Janice becomes increasingly hysterical um, and, and just absolutely enraged. And so during the recess before the, the um, voting on, on guilt or innocence, Scotty and McCoy, who are the other two people sitting on the um, the judging panel for Spock's mutiny trial, in the hallway, they're basically like, yeah, that isn't the captain. The captain is clearly not in the right frame of mind here. We may need to resist. And McCoy does say, you're talking about mutiny, Scotty. And Scotty's like, yeah. Janice has taped their conversation in the hallway, uh, uses it as evidence that they are mutineers as well, and summarily sentences Kirk 
uh, sentences McCoy, Scotty, Spock, and Janice Lester to death. Which Sulu and Chekhov, who are there observing the proceedings, remind Janice is illegal under Starfleet regulations. There is no death penalty except for violation of General Order 4, which has not happened in this case. Um, so, what we get is a situation in which increasingly the rest of the crew begins to passively, really, uh, resist Janice's orders. Sulu and um, and Chekhov are ordered to lay in a um, an orbit course around this planet where Kirk, well, sorry, where Janice wanted to dump Kirk, and they refused to do so. The communications officer, who's not Okura in this for some reason, uh, refuses to announce to the ship and to the crew that executions are going to take place, and Janice just loses it. Like, she she just goes ballistic, and then the transference starts to weaken. Um, and so Janice's unstable emotional state, combined with Spock doing something to Kirk back of, back of her neck there in the brig, um, these things sort of weaken the transference. So Janice and Pullman decide that they have to murder Kirk in order to make sure the transference sticks. They're unable to do this, and they they do come up with a plan. They take Kirk out of the brig, and then interestingly enough, um, Kirk in the body of Janice is struggling with Coleman, who's trying to murder him, and Janice, in Kirk's body, shouts, kill him, kill him. Um, Scotty, McCoy, and Spock walk out of the cell to sort of deal with this whole situation. And basically, the transference is broken. Kirk goes back into his own body. Janice goes back into her body. And she breaks down, basically being like, I want to murder you. So, yeah. So, there's a lot uh, going on here that's interesting. Most of it revolves around gender issues. Clearly, one of the driving forces of Janice's um, psychological condition is internalized misogyny, right? This idea that as a woman, she's inherently inferior, that it's that it's terrible to be a woman, that only men have value. This is a form of internalized misogyny. And that's got to be an incredibly detrimental worldview to hold. This, uh, this idea that your own physical body is a prison and that in some ways your your physical body is in opposition to who you believe yourself to be or who you are in this case Janice so I, I'm, I'm going to put those two options out there because on the one hand Janice thinks that she should be in command of a starship. The reality is that's not a position that she's earned. She just, she, she is not qualified to do that specific job. But there's another component here to the, the gender politics of this episode, which is about trans identity. Um, the reality is that trans people are the gender that they identify with. Trans men are men, trans women are women. That's pretty easy and straightforward. But their physical body does not reflect who they are. And in this sense, Janice 
is somewhat in that situation. And she she feels more confident, more at home in Kirk's body. She probably, on some level, is a trans man. But in the 1960s, in 1969, that wasn't really a thing that people were even aware existed. Like, the idea of being trans as such was not completely unknown, but it wasn't something it, it wasn't something that had the sort of social awareness that we have of it today in 2023, for instance. So this is this is where this is there the, the episode here is a little bit tricky to read because on the one hand we can read this in a very sort of conservative anti-trans way that equates being trans with mental illness that we can we can link janice's psychology to her being trans and say she is hysterical she's psychotic because she is trans but i actually don't think that's the case here the implication from what kirk says is that she was not always this she was not always violent. She was not always, while she was always, while she never felt comfortable or that it was valuable to be a woman, it doesn't seem like she was always ready to murder a bunch of people um, in order to try and take on a position she hadn't earned. So, in this sense, I think that there's actually another way of reading this. A, what I would say is a better way of reading this, and, and possibly a more accurate way of reading this, which is th which is that when trans people or LGBT people more generally are not allowed to be who they are, when society d refuses to offer the possibility of being themselves, their authentic selves, then that is psychologically detrimental. And so this is one of the big things, right, is the fact that there are much higher than average rates of suicide or, or suicidal ideation among trans people and LGBT people in general has been pointed to by anti-trans and homophobic people as evidence that this is a mental illness. But the fact that those rates are much lower in societies that are accepting of LGBT people suggests that actually this has more to do with social acceptance and the difficulties of functioning in a society that demonizes or, or delegitimizes your identity. And I think this is, this is maybe... So to be clear, I'm I'm kind of reading this episode and this character of Janice Lester in that way, in part because I think it is the more correct way, um, both scientifically correct and psychologically correct. But also, I think there is, I think it's one of those things where. In 1969, they couldn't conceptualize things in the way that we conceptualize them today. But there is clearly some core of empathy for the suffering that this character has undergone through this internalized hatred. This, in this case, realistically internalized misogyny. Um, 